Oh, come on, come on. <laughs> oh, St. Helens is a town with a heart for rugby. Yay! Uh, there we go. Uh, rugby league, that is, by the way. Generations of coal miners have kept the country warm. It's the home of Kilkington's Glass, Beecham's, Gamble, Procter & Gamble were based here, as were Greenall's Brewery and Ravenhead Glass. St. Helens is a post-industrial town now facing the challenges of how to provide employment in 2022, how to make sure no one goes hungry or cold, what to do about a change in town centre with in-person retail decline but growing retail parks. Our town is changing. St Helens has a plan for regeneration and our churches do too. But how many churches are there? Well, here in St Helens Deanery, we are 18 parishes based around the focal point of our town centre. We've been working together as a deanery, we collaborate, we support each other, and we do have fun. We do, but realistically, we know that the church is facing challenging times. In St. Helens, only 1% of people are associated with any kind of church. The Church of England has lost half a million regular attenders in less than 40 years across the country. Around when I was born, the average age of the congregation was 37, and in 2017, 2017 40 years later, it was 61. It's a sad fact that nearly 40% of churches have no children in them at all and most of them have less than five children. And this decline is accelerating. This is the brutal reality of where we are. Jesus once told a parable where there are 99 sheep safe in a pen, and he goes out looking for the one that is lost. In Liverpool and St Helens, it's been turned on its head. It is as if there is one sheep safe in the pen, and Jesus has gone out to look for the 99 that are lost. Hang on a minute, didn't you say though that there was a plan? Well the plan is to ask God for a bigger, bigger church, church to make a bigger difference. That would mean more people knowing Jesus and more justice in, in the world. world. Thank you. And after months of deliberation, conversations, data collection, prayer and discernment, the this diocese created a new programme. Fit for mission? It's a commission. No, we want to be fit for mission. St Helens is one of two deaneries in Liverpool Diocese who are in the first cohort of Fit for Mission and this will be rolled out across the diocese over the next six years. So tell us, what is Fit for Mission? Well, can you imagine a church that's made up of lots of different churches and worshipping communities that are all working together, truly working together, respecting difference, diversity, all drawn together by a love of God and a desire to... Introduce people to Jesus deepen discipleship, develop Christian leaders, and work for justice. Surely we're doing that already? Well, yeah, but we are trying to do everything in single parishes or small teams. The Fit for Mission programme will provide focus and support to help us work together as a bigger team in one parish to face the significant issues together that hold back mission and growth. The goal of Fit for Mission is to enable all parishes, church plants, fresh expressions, schools and chaplaincies to fulfil God's mission and to make new disciples where they are. We want a more diverse church that represents a variety of generations, of cultures, of colour. We want to share the administrative burden. Do you mean that we won't all need to do our own parish accounts? Does that mean there'll only be one? Yes, no duplicating, and hopefully we won't be asking people to work harder or better, but working together so that more energy is available for mission. And what about the buildings? Do you know, we're blessed with so many amazing buildings, but we just have too many that we can support well. How many new roofs do we need, or new boilers, and how are we going to heat them all this winter? The buildings need to support the people in our worship and be a warm and welcoming place. That's right, a lot of our buildings are creaking and they were built more than 100 years ago. What do we need now in 2022? Caring for buildings is not only a strain on finances, 
but already on our time poor volunteers who don't have specialist building and management skills. We want our buildings to be fit for mission. And don't forget the church is all about the people. We want to grow our church and we need the right buildings to do it. So what are these four areas again? Introducing people to, to Jesus, deepening discipleship, developing new leaders and social justice. So what you're saying is sorting out some of the practical administrative bits will make the mission and growth possible? Yes. Here in St. Helens we have 12 churches who decided to work together to create change, to work together to become one parish. And in St. Helens we're making the decisions ourselves about what our parish and our future looks like. We have a few change teams working on specific areas. Yep, I'm in the navigation team of local lay and ordain people to make changes happen, um, to steer the project and to keep the deadlines over the next two years. And we've committed to meet every week to review and agree the priorities. And there's a great team who will be looking after the opportunities for mission and supporting and encouraging people to take part. The team won't be doing it all, but making sure that everyone has the resources they need to make it happen. We have help and support too from the Fit for Mission delivery team. Right now we are encouraging everyone to join Cultivate. This is a training opportunity where we will seek God and talk, listen, learn and pray about starting new things. Everyone is invited. You don't need any special skills. You just need to love God and love your neighbour as much as you love yourself. And then there's the Right Buildings team. They've already started meeting and visiting our buildings. And they are an energetic bunch of people with wide experience with eco issues, construction, business, and a real heart for people. They're meeting with the Fit for Mission Right Buildings manager, who's a chartered surveyor. So watch this space. As a deanery, we have been asking the diocese for expertise to help us be good stewards of our buildings. I'm really hopeful that now we have what we need to really make a difference. We also have a support services team and structural team to look after admin and all the legal, dare I say, a bit boring bits. Or <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe boring to you. But <laughs> not to me, but. Um, another exciting development of the different portfolios, we're developing different streams of ministry. Um, that will be supported, resourced and uh, encouraged places where lay and ordained people can work to their strengths and gifts. I'm really excited that our first portfolio in St Helens has been a prayer portfolio. A couple of folk who are really passionate about prayer and they're developing a proposal about what prayer might look like in our churches over the next year. Maybe prayer days or spiritual direction um, or maybe another prayer map like we had over the summer when we were praying for all the roads where we worked where we lived and where we worshipped. It's been so great to see that map gradually get coloured in as people were praying for their neighbours. And I'm really enjoying being part of Fit for Mission as we're getting coached and we're getting help from people with specialist skills. And I'm really excited about the Cultivate pathway and how well the sessions are going and how everyone can be a part of it. Can you imagine new missional leaders, new worshipping communities and justice initiatives all across our country? So who can go to Cultivate? Anyone. So, just before we finish, who can take part in Fit for Mission? Well, Fit for Mission relies on each single one of us seeking God and working together. For the saints to go marching in, they need to work together in unison and sing in unison, chaps, please. <laughs> <laughs> when we meet together, when we put other, needs, other people's needs first, well, God does amazing things. We are hoping and praying for amazing things here in St. Helens. So help us out with our singing all together now. Oh, when they sing.